and a notepad with you, then you're not that hungry. It's like going to the table and being served food and, and not having a, a fork and a knife and a spoon. You got to eat with your hands and it's messy. It's like mashed potatoes. You ever eat mashed potatoes with your hands and gravy? That's messy. Anyway, I, I just appreciate it when you guys show up with notepads and stuff because then I know you're hungry. You're hungry to learn. Okay, we are live. Welcome to Granite Bay Youth Ministries. We are glad you're here. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of young people here. We have just broken a new record, ladies and gentlemen. We are at 58 people. Uh, we've never had that many before, and I didn't even post anything on Instagram. So what does that tell you, Tony? And so we're a little excited that everybody's here. I got faces in front of me. There's faces behind me. We got a small um, studio audience today. We have our uh, precious friend, mighty man of God, Vic Mills from New York has joined us. He is still in New York. You're still in New York, right, Vic? Yes, sir. Okay, I could I was like, those pictures look familiar behind your head. So I was like, he's got to be at home again. Okay, good. And uh, we're going to get started. But uh, before we do, just a quick announcement. Tomorrow is a really huge day for not... As some, most of you are enjoying the Sabbath right now, but tomorrow at three o'clock Pacific Standard Time, we are launching amazing disciples training on this channel. There's actually another code and a password that you may have received or will receive. If you send me an email, if you didn't get an email from Amazing Facts, for example, if you see the sign behind me, do you want to switch cameras, Mark? There you are. The sign behind me. That was the Undaunted Courage uh, email from Amazing Facts that announced AFCO. Be here if you can get here. If you can't, we're going to do Amazing Disciples on Zoom. For anybody that is that couldn't meet the requirements of age and or uh, education, so 18 and younger, and anybody who can't get here, uh, to AFCO and wants to join us tomorrow at 3 o'clock, send an email to GBSDA. Can you put this at the bottom of the screen, Marcus? GBSDA youth at Gmail. Okay, he's, he's figuring that out. GBSDA youth at gmail.com. I will send you the login information. You will get the free book. Amazing Disciples uh, by, via PDF. It is a $200 value you're going to get for free. We're going to do it for the next 14 weeks. Tomorrow is going to be an introductory, get to know one another, go through some of the details, talk. And then the next week will be starting in the first week of this. I'll also send you the link for the PDF unless you want to go on your phone because we haven't started yet, and text this number, 40544, 40544. I'll say it one more time for those that are in their car, like Jack. Four, but he's already signed up. 40544, and then text the word disciples in that text, and you will get, you will receive this book via PDF to your phone. If you're going to join us for the next 14 weeks, starting tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, all y'all that are from outside that time zone of 3 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, where like you're totally asleep or something, tell me you still want to come and I will figure out a way that I can still do this and facilitate you guys being involved for ministry in amazing disciples okay is that fair gba gbys no it's gb just gb buddy gb sda youth at gmail gb sda youth at gmail.com that was before we got our logo gby ministries okay so i've got somebody here that's going to pray for us danielle are you here danielle I believe I was doing the song. You're, oh, you're doing this. You are doing the opening song. I misread my notes. Jerry, 
Are you here, brother? You are? Yes, I'm here. And okay, so just one more quick announcement. Everybody that's here, I'd like you guys to go to your name, rename your name to your first name, last name, first initial, and where you're from. For example, if you look at Elmjoy, he's got some cool stars in there, but she's got Elmjoy-NYC. This is so that, again, we've just broke another record, ladies and gentlemen. We are now at 66 people plus two in the studio audience. That makes 68. That is a huge record. I don't know why anybody's not screaming and yelling yet. It's, it's you know, I'm kind of excited about that, right? Seriously. Um, but if you add where you're from, so when people are watching, they know where you're watching. For like Adam, Adam's in Poland. Like El Eli Liano, I don't know where you're from, but Don is from Connecticut. Joshua, I don't know where you're from. Hope is here. Hope, where are you from? New Zealand. <laughs> and uh, so, which is awesome. And we got Jerry. He's from the Netherlands, but you can't see that he's from the Netherlands because his last name is there. So first name, last name, first initial only, then where you're from, okay? Oceana, if you could say where you're from, whether it be California, whether it be Pennsylvania, New York, Vancouver Island, Miss Megan, and Chris is in there. Deborah's here. Deborah's from Honduras. Oh, we just broke another record, ladies and gentlemen. We are now at 72 people. I'm going to lose my voice from yelling, you guys. This is, I'm literally in shock. This is, I remember we used to get excited for 10 people. What? What's that? Oh, is that? I have another announcement to make. Tony's been looking at the chats coming in and not how many people are here. Um, I have no excuses um, other than to be excited. So there are 38 of us <laughs> to be exact. Or the angels are here too. I can't wait for the meme of that one, JJ. Um, quick, take a picture, JJ. Okay. Um, so let's let's open a prayer. I'm sorry. I'm I'm enjoying just everybody being here. Vic is like Tony. I've come with a word from the Lord, and you're messing around. I apologize, Vic. Okay. Um, Jerry, would you mind opening up in prayer, please? I would be most grateful. Sure. Heavenly Father. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for his sacrifice. We are gathered here today to learn about you, to be with your children, so that we may get closer to you, so that we may do your will, so that we may get closer and love more because it truly is a gift to speak about you. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for being so loving. Thank you for everything. You are our treasure. In, we, in you, we are strong. Amen. 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 Okay, Victor, I'm going to hand it over to you, and uh, we look forward. I've got my pen in hand and my notebook in front of me and my Bible, and I'm ready. Okay, okay. Very good, very good. Yeah, someone's saying opening song, question mark. I, don't, I didn't know if there was an opening oh, song. Vic, thank you. <laughs> Boy, Tony is just all over the board tonight. No uh, problem. Dan Danielle. Could, could you please, uh, would you find Danielle Marcus? And uh, she's going to do opening song. She's been all prepared, and here's Tony just jumping right over it. Where is Danielle? I can't see her. She's I'm here. right here. There she is. There she is. Hey. <laughs> there we found you. Okay, there we go. Danielle and Nicole, you guys are going to do song together? Yeah. And, uh, wow, that was I hate when we do that. <laughs> no, I kind of like it. Um, and so what, song, what song are you going to be doing for us? It's one everybody knows, Amazing Grace. Oh, <laughs> one of my faves. And you guys can sing along with us, too, if you want to. Yeah, 
Okay, ready? Sure. Um. Thank you, Danielle and Nicole. Thank you for doing that. The recording has stopped. Yes, thank you. Our recording has stopped. And now, Victor, we're going to ask you to please share with you, uh, us, what's on your heart. Awesome, awesome. Thank you again, Tony, for the invitation. You know, it was so funny because um, you sent the group chat out uh, about the speakers, what speakers would be coming up for the next schedule. And uh, I didn't have your phone number registered. And I, it was all these numbers going back and forth, texting and buzzing. And all I saw was green, GBY. And I was like, this must be some scam. <laughs> this must be some, you know, telemarketing. So I literally deleted it. And I was like, I don't know who these numbers are. And then I went on my on my computer and it and then I started seeing people, yeah, I'll preach this day. And I'm like, oh <laughs> I just deleted the group schedule for Granite Bay Youth. And I felt so bad, but I appreciate you reaching out directly and and uh, being persistent because I wouldn't have known who that was. Um, so I, I'm delighted to be here again. Um, I'm so uh glad that we're breaking record attendance records. Um, I praise the Lord, you know it it's funny <laughs> it's funny maybe i'll mention this afterwards but i was i was debating not even preaching tonight um and we'll I'll, I'll get into why maybe by the end of our presentation i was like lord you know i, I don't even really feel like talking i don't know if any young people could relate or um, preachers could relate sometimes you preach so much and uh, you go through trials and the devil wants to discourage you that you don't even want to talk anymore. You don't even feel, see the value of preaching. And then um, my mother and some friends encouraged me to, uh, to preach because that feeling is even more of a reason why we should be getting into God's word. So I'm happy that all the young people are here. I see 43 participants, but I know there's way more um, welcome those around the world, around the United States. I know, I know this youth group gets international, so I just want to greet everybody. Uh, good morning, happy Sabbath, good night, good evening, wherever you are. Um, happy Sabbath, and uh, I, I'm just excited to be here. We're going to get into our study uh, this evening. Uh, you know, something short and sweet. Uh, my mom has been telling me, Vic, you know, if you go over 30, 45 minutes, people are going to fall asleep. So I'm trying to, I'll try to make sure I get into that range. You know, mothers always are honest with you guys, right? That's the blessing of a mother. They can, they're always honest. So listen to your mothers when they tell you uh, something very truthful, you know, because <laughs> they, they won't mince any words. So we're going to have a short, sweet devotional tonight. Uh, plus it's 
10, 17, my time. And, you know, we got to wake up for church tomorrow. And so I don't want to keep East coasters waiting. I don't want to keep, you know, I don't want to keep people up too much tonight, but I have a message. Like Tony mentioned, the Lord has placed on my heart. Um, before that we do that, I want to say another word of prayer. So let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, um, you, you, you know, where I'm at, Father. You know um, I need you. You know I need the Holy Spirit, Lord. I can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. We can't do anything without the Holy Spirit, Lord. So I ask uh, before we begin that you would remove any stumbling block that's in our way, Lord, that and any uh, uh, ear listening uh, under my voice, Lord. If there's something between our soul and the Savior, we ask that you remo remove it now. Open our eyes that we may see wondrous things out of your word and open our ears, Lord, open our hearts. Father, I ask that you fill us all with your spirit. Um, even now, wherever we may be, bless us as we study your word. Encourage us to stay faithful, Lord, in this dark, dark world. Bless us to be a light in this world. Guide us even now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be in John chapter 20. I, you know, it's so funny as a speaker, young people, I, when they, it's so funny when I'm not asked to speak, I have so many ideas for a sermon. I don't know if this happens with you, Tony, but I have so many ideas. When they ask me to speak or do something, they all leave. And I'm like, Lord, what do I say? I spend like a week trying to figure out what to say. My mind goes blank. But when a text grips me, I mean, I just start getting excited. So, um, we're in John chapter 20, and we're going to study the resurrection. And I mentioned at the beginning of, of our talk that my sermon entitled is, or my topic, um, Why Weepest Thou? Why Weepest Thou? So if you have your Bibles, which I assume you do, this is the Granite Bay Youth Group. Uh, uh, you know, you guys are world, internationally renowned. I see, I see uh, Bibles uh, being shown. Very good. Please take your Bibles out. Take your iPhones out. We're going to get in the Word, uh, and hopefully by God's grace tonight, you will be uh, encouraged and transformed by the renewing of our hearts and minds. So, John chapter 20, we're talking about the resurrection. You know, this was one of the most trying time in the disciples' lives. Just think about it. If you were in association with Jesus— if you were a disciple with Jesus for three years, I mean, you guys ate together. You guys slept in the same vicinity. You guys traveled together. You were always together with Jesus, and now Jesus has died. Just put yourself in your their shoes. You, you may be a Peter who, you know, you, the, the first thing you do is open your mouth before you think. You may be a Thomas who's always doubting. You may be a John who is so beloved and always one of the youngest and always wants to be in the midst of Jesus's presence. Uh, you may be a disciple uh, uh, who, who loves Jesus, and now he's crucified. The disciples didn't understand Christ's mission, even up until his crucifixion and resurrection. I mean, that's sad, right? If you were three years with Jesus, you'd think you would get uh, the picture at least the third year. At least he's he, Jesus himself is telling you, listen, I'm going to be led up uh, by the elders and the priests to be crucified, and in three days, I'll rise again. You would say, wow, that's pretty straightforward, Jesus. You're going to die, and you're going to be raised again. But you see, the disciples had a worldly concept of Christ's mission. They said, listen, Jesus, he's the Messiah. He's going to uh, uh, break the power of the Romans, stop the oppression and, and this control over Rome, and we're going to rule the nations like we, in, like we were intended to do. But Jesus disappointed their worldly ambition. Jesus was uh, 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 persecuted for righteousness sake. Jesus was nailed to the cross. We sing the song Amazing Grace, and it reminds us that we don't deserve the sacrifice of Jesus. I mean, 
listen, young people, just because we're in the Granite Bay youth and we and we and we're here with with Tony and we're here with all our friends and 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 we're studying God's word, we can't take the credit for that. It's only the Holy Spirit and the goodness of God that we're even on this chat, on, on this Zoom meeting. Because if it was to ourselves, we'd be scrolling on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, looking at highlights on the Sabbath, talking to things other than Sabbath things, keeping, uh, 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 you know, keeping uh, our own pleasures on the Sabbath. So it's only because of the grace of God that we're even here. So Jesus has died. His hands were nailed to the cross. His forehead was pierced with thorns. His side was pierced. And Jesus died for our, for our sins. We in the 21st century today are, are joyous. And we sing Amazing Grace, but the disciples were depressed, disheartened, and disappointed. John 20 describes the kind of back and forth and almost like a relay race to the tomb to see if Jesus was really there. They didn't believe he was going to resurrect. They didn't even understand what he meant through this resurrection. So you got Mary Magdalene in verse one coming early in the morning and then comes Peter and we know John is there and there's like a back and forth and one went forth and one is running together and one is coming back. I mean, they're all going to the tomb. Verse four, it says, so they both ran together and the other disciple did outrun Peter. So just, <laughs> these guys are excited. I mean, you talk about the Olympics uh, you talk about sprinting. You talk about uh, world-class athletes. I think these disciples, man, were like, these guys were ready to run, dude. These guys were, were waiting for this moment to say, is Jesus really there? It, 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 they're, one's outrunning the other. It, it's funny, but, you know, uh, Mary Magdalene actually gets the, the, actually gets the prize because she waits on the Lord. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> and, and it says in verse 5, if you're with me in John chapter 20, verse 5, it says, He, Peter, stooping down and looking, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then Simon Peter, following him, went into the sepulcher and seed the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was uh, uh, about his head, not lying in the with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. I encourage you, young people, to read Desire of Ages. Why weepest thou? It's a it's a beautiful chapter, and uh, you would get so much in depth. I, I for time's sake, I can't even go into that verse. But Ellen White talks about Jesus was not a disorderly person. I mean, I see, I see, uh, I see some people's rooms, and everybody's clean. Praise the Lord! You got your pillows in order, your beds are made. Jesus didn't just get up and say, "Oh, let me get these robes off me. I'm ready to go," and just leave it on the floor, plop. I'm ready to serve, serve my disciples, and glorify my Father and go to heaven. Jesus was so detailed. Ellen White says he folded his clothes and put them in their specific place. So, uh, young people, I encourage you, fold your clothes and make your bed because uh, Jesus did it when he was risen from the dead. And, and we're not dead yet. So I'm telling you, be orderly because Jesus is orderly. Here's some practical lessons you can you can learn. And I think it's chapter 81. Yes, chapter 81 or 80, Why Weepest Thou? Go check it out. I encourage young people to always read the spirit of prophecy. Don't take my words. Go to the word. Go to the spirit of prophecy, and you'll be so blessed. So, verse 8, it says, Then went also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and saw and believed. Verse 9, For as yet they knew not... Uh, the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. There you go, hinting again. How do you not know the scripture that he was going to rise from the dead when you were with him for three years? I mean, we give the disciples the hard time, but we do the exact same thing. How many times do you go to church and you hear that Jesus is alive and is coming again? 
And we just said, wow, okay. Back to school on Monday, I, you know, that was a good sermon. What's for potluck? I mean, did my mom make some great haystacks? I mean, what do we got here, guys? I can't wait till church is over so I could just start eating the food and hanging out with my friends. But Jesus is alive and he's coming again. And yet we don't even study that. We don't even spend time studying God's word. We're caught up, young people. And I know because I get caught up. You guys think, man, Vic's the preacher, the elder, the pastor. Dude, I get caught up as well. And so we need a daily surrender to the Lord. A moment by moment. You know, <laughs> we wake up and the first thing, sometimes you I do it most of the time. You're already on, on social media, already checking the emails. And, and it's by this time, it's 6.30, 7.30. And you're like, where did the time go? You're in your bed on social media, when we should be spending time with God so that we're not surprised when he does come, right? So that we're not surprised by the the the, the uh, world events that are happening showing that Jesus is coming again. So the disciples, they didn't even know, man. <laughs> they didn't even know. I'll just let that sink in. Verse 9, they knew not sure he must rise again from the dead. Young people, know your scripture. This is why we're studying the Bible. Verse 10, then the disciples went away all to their own home. They're depressed. They don't know Jesus is risen again. They are saying, listen, we better lock ourselves, and you'll see that in verse 19 and 20. We better hide lest these Pharisees and Sadducees and Romans come and take us and persecute us and, dis and kill us. We, these guys are scared out of their mind. Everybody's gone but Mary. I mean, what kind of tough guys are these? Dude, you got Peter chopping people's ears off. I mean, you got John trying to cast out fire on Samaritans. I mean, and then when the, when push comes to shove, these guys are gone, and you got Mary there. There we go. There's there there's a there's a uh, there's a uh, a, 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 a blessing and a promise for the women. We got to learn something from women: the patience of a woman, right? The waiting on the Lord. Notice verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. Here we're getting into our text. Why weepest thou? It's coming. Weeping. And she wept. And she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. Note, look, check this out. Check this out. Verse 12, you, young people, we got to get excited about the word of God. I mean, check this out in verse 12. I mean, I get hyped and everybody knows I get hyped. I can't control it. I said, Lord, please help me to be calm, but I never can be calm. So we got to get hyped here. Look at verse 12. And he, she, and see two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other where the uh, at his feet, where the body of Jesus lay. Watch Mary Magdalene do it. They, they don't even understand yet. It says, and they and they said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. When you read Desire of Ages, it says the sepulcher is full of glory. There, there's light coming out of the sepulcher, and Mary is so, so looking for, so desperate looking for, looking for Jesus that she sees two angels, and it's just like, who are these guys? I mean... I mean, okay, where's Jesus? Where, If you saw two angels, I would say, whoa, something's going on here. I, I, at least we would think so, right? We would think that, that this wouldn't phase us, but Mary Magdalene is so in love with Jesus, she wants to know where Jesus is, and she just said, oh, thank you guys. Thanks for telling me about Jesus. These guys are angels. You got Gabriel sitting here, guys. I mean, wow. She didn't even recognize them as the angels, right? Ellen White describes them as a young man. It's beautiful. Read that chapter in Desire of Ages. As young men, and there's glory, but these are two angels in white. And they say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, because they have taken my Lord, and I know not where they have laid them. Verse 14. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back. Dude, again, here we go. Just think. 
I'm turning away from heavenly beings. Like the tomb is full of light, guys. This is this is crazy. She's turning away. And then she saw, it says, and saw Jesus standing, but knew him not. Young people, I know, you know, it's, it's Tony was mentioning about people going through trials, a brother who's gone through a lot, a sister who's gone through a lot, those who are in the midst of the fiery furnace. I don't know where you are, international or national, but I know everybody's going through something. And we like to get all nice and smiling on, on the chat and on the Zoom and in church, but people are going through things. And the message, young people, that God wants us to understand, the question and the message is, why weepest thou? You may feel like Jesus is far from you. You may feel like Mary Magdalene, who's lived a life of up and down, back and forth. I'm with Jesus. I'm not with Jesus. He says, go and sin no more. And seven demons come into me all over again. I then ask for forgiveness. I pour $40,000 worth of alabaster oil on Jesus's feet. And now he's dead. And I don't know where he is, and I need Jesus. Young people, older people, adults, myself, the devil would like it for all of us to be discouraged. The devil would like the trials to weigh down on us so that, like I mentioned initially in our sermon, so Vic, you don't preach. Let me let me let, let me press down these trials. Let me turn the heat up in these trials so that you're discouraged to even talk to anybody about God. And we may have the same disappointment as Mary, looking for Jesus in all the wrong places. Luke says, "Why are you going to the dead to look for the living?" That's in Luke 24, verse 5, I believe. Now, Jesus is right in her midst, and she doesn't even know it. You see, young people, we could get so caught up in our trials, our tribulations, or our mountaintop experiences. Things are going good. I'm getting a new job. I'm progressing in life. I've gotten to a new relationship. I'm moving to a new place. And you could not even know if Jesus is with you or not. You see, verse 15, Jesus asked the question again. Jesus now says this, says unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Two questions. She, look at this, this is crazy. Yeah. I mean, she, look at this young people, verse 15. She's supposing to him being the gardener. Yo, I, you know, I'm from New York. Listen, I, I know people in the city, there's not too many gardeners. I don't know if you guys see gardeners. There's just too many streets over there. But listen, how can you mix Jesus and a gardener up? How can you get that confused? Have mercy. You see, when, when doubt depression, despondency, the trials eclipse our view of Jesus. We don't even recognize him. He's a stranger to us. But all the while he's there and he asked the question to Mary and he asked the question to you young people, why are you weeping? Why are you so sad? Verse 15, she supposed him to be the gardener and said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Man. Jesus is speaking to her, and she still thinks he's dead. Young people, we may be in this church. We may be in the Seventh-day Adventist church. We may be in the Granite Bay Youth zoom live stream and we don't even know jesus we can't even recognize jesus because under the smile we're weeping 
But Jesus is going to call you by name tonight. Verse 16, Jesus now gets specific and said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which mean, which is to say, Master. Jesus is calling your name this evening, young people. Kyle, all right, Natalie, Edward. I can go down the list, all 47 people and more. God wants a relationship with you. Jesus in communion with him. He doesn't want you to see him as a stranger. He doesn't want you to see him as the gardener. He does not want you to misunderstand the trials that you're facing today. You see? You may say, God, why, why are you allowing all this in my life? Accidents, death, depression, bad news. And why this is personal to me and why, you know, to kind of tell the story as to why I even, I didn't even want to preach. It's so crazy, Tony. I, I, I deleted the text, but I was going to send a text out this afternoon saying, Tony, I can't make it. You know, a lot of things happened this past week, actually yesterday. Yesterday, my mother uh, went to the ER with some pain. She's always been feeling some pain. And uh, for a while now, and she just went to the ER yesterday and was diagnosed with cancer. And that hit me yesterday. Crazy, right? And I didn't want to talk to any. I said, Lord, I got this. I don't want to say anything to anything about anything about Jesus. And, and I, I was going to send the text. I was going to delete the text, send the text out and we wouldn't even, I don't know who you would have as a speaker tonight. But for some reason, God said, Vic, just let it go. Just let it go. Everything's going to be okay. And as I'm, you know, I was, I, I cut grass on the side as a side hustle. So I cut grass. I'm on my lawnmower. I'm listening to Desire of Ages. And this, and I'm on this chapter and I hear the verse and I hear the paragraph in the text. Why weepest thou? That's a sad, that's a, it's, it's sad news when a family member dies, when your mom gets diagnosed with cancer. You, you think your parents are going to live forever. Just think, young people, you think your parents are going to live forever. And when you get bad news, it's like your stomach. It's like, dude, you don't even know. It's so crazy. But God allows trials so that you grow closer to him. You put life into perspective. You you start to 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 under, You start to see things in, in in reality. Why am I always fighting with my mom here? Why am I arguing over this? What these are so insignificant when somebody's life is in jeopardy. You see, and 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 the devil wanted to eclipse the view of Jesus to me this week. He wanted me to be discouraged. He wanted me to be down and out. But Jesus came to me through the power of the Holy Spirit and says, Vic, <laughs> why weepest thou? Who, who are you looking for? You, you, think, you, you, you think that your mom's going to live forever? You think this world is going to get a little better and better as we get back to normal? Then I heard Jesus say, Victor, and I understood that the trial of our faith worketh patience. And, and the verses started coming to me, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. As the son, the Lord, as a father, he loveth his son. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. David says in the Psalms, in thy faithfulness hath thou afflicted me. Have mercy. Jesus, God, in, in the Messianic prophecy of Isaiah 53, God is telling Isaiah that it pleased the Lord to bruise his own son. Have mercy. I thought this Christian life, young people, is going to be sunshine and rainbows all the time. 
Everything going to work out. We're going to have a Hollywood ending, a happy story ending, you know, just like the Disney Channel, just like the movies. Telling you. The proper view of trials. You see, it's not bad to weep. God, Jesus wept. We can weep, but it's the perspective, young people, I want you to understand is that trials are for your good. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I don't know in my life what the journey is going to be with this diagnosis. But I was encouraged by verse 17. Jesus said unto her, touch me not. For I am not a yet, yet ascended to my father, but I go, but go to thy brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and to your God. And God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, says, Vic, literally, yeah, this is so crazy. Let me stop myself. This is, we just did family worship at a friend's house like maybe an hour ago. And the Holy Spirit told me, Vic, go to this verse. And we read this for our devotional after we sang our hymns. And the Lord said, because I was going to do else. It was going to be a heavy duty sermon. But then the Lord was like, bro, you got to speak things that are, you're going through your life. Like, you know, sometimes pe speakers talk and you know, it's like, dude, I can't even connect. You're not even feeling this sermon, you know, and this is literally what's happening in my life right now. And the Lord said, tell the young people this, that God is our father because of Jesus Christ. And he is your God and he is my God because Jesus is not dead, young people. Have mercy. Jesus is risen and Jesus is alive. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to me? That means when I'm going through something, Ellen White describes Jesus in the last chapter of Desire of Ages as our friend at the throne. I mean, how many are friends here? Can I, can I get a little wave? Can I get some emojis in the chat? Every, you, you know, you guys are pretty, you guys know each other pretty well through this group and, and through this Facebook uh, 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 youth group. And if, say if, let me get some names here. Let me get some names. Say if Carissa, right? Uh, uh, say if Carissa needed help from, let's see another name. Let me see another name. Uh, uh, let's see, from Jeremiah or Jeffrey. Right. Say if say if Carissa needed help and you, uh, Jeremiah or Jeffrey or Adam. Right. You could help Carissa out. Wouldn't you do that? If she said, listen, I need something. I need a Bible. Could you send me a Bible? I need something. You would help a friend out. You guys all have your best friends, your BFFs. OK. All right. <laughs> you guys all have your friends and they would help you. Ellen White in Desire of Ages, describes Jesus as this, our friend at the throne. Woo! Hold on, let me say that. We have a friend at the throne. Jesus is your friend. You may say, Vic, I've sinned too much. Jesus is the friend of sinners. Hold up. So if I have a friend at the throne, why don't I pray enough? Have mercy. Why don't I ask that friend for the greatest gift in this world, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. Why don't I ask this friend the peace that passes all understanding? You see? So when Tony mentions our brother, I, I, I forget his name, but he mentioned him at the beginning, the trials he'd been through. When I mentioned my mom being diagnosed with cancer, when I mentioned, you know, uh, when people mention the trials in their life, that's because God is doing a work in them. And it may not always be easy, but let me tell you, young people, Jesus is risen. And because Jesus is risen, we can rise again. And you say, well, what about if my mom dies? What about if my friend dies? What about the family members who are lost with COVID? Jesus has conquered death. That don't matter. It may be sad. You may cry. I may cry. I did cry. I was weeping when I heard the news. And Jesus said, why weepest thou? I had conquered death and the grave. Have mercy. That even if 
family member passes away, the perspective is they're resting in the grave until Jesus comes. And if their heart is right with the Lord, young people, we'll be there for eternity. See, now, now your perspective changes. Your mission is to say, you know what? I want to be with Jesus in heaven. I want to be with my family members in heaven. I want to make it there, and I want other people to come with me. Jesus is alive, young people. And I'm not to cliche the movie, God is not dead. You, I know everybody's going to think God is not dead. I'm not trying to cliche, but Jesus is risen. He's our friend at the throne. Young people, when you fall into sin, here's another aspect, because we get in hype. I see everybody getting hype. But when you fall into sin, you have an advocate with the Father. Whoever liveth to make intercession for you. You said me? Hold up, hold up. Yo, I'm on Granite Bay Youth, but nobody knows what I did last night. No one knows who I had to follow, unfollow, who I swiped on Instagram, who I seen this or that. Come on now, we got to be real. Only God knows the sins in our hearts. But we have a friend at the throne who is alive, who his only job is to help you through the power of the Holy Spirit overcome through the blood of the Lamb. We sing amazing grace. Now amazing grace is when I sin, I can confess my sin, and I actually have a friend there who says, yo, my blood on Granite Bay Youth. Have you, you guys get that? I mean, wait till you guys get a little older. Things are going to get a little crazy if Jesus doesn't come. But you're going to fall if you fall. You Listen, you guys, there may be an Enoch in the midst. I don't know, but I haven't been one. I haven't been one. And I know this gave me so much encouragement that I got a father in heaven. I have a God in heaven. I have a God who created the heavens and who will give me peace and comfort in my time of need. Jesus is risen. We don't serve a God who's dead. So young people, why weepest thou tonight? If anybody's weeping, I want to encourage you. Look to Jesus. Jesus is calling you by your name right now. Through this text, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he's saying, Victor, Tony, Natalie, I'm trying to go through the list here. Cooney, Taylor, Robert, Dylan, Jeremiah, Megan. He's calling you and saying, listen, you're not alone. You have a friend at the throne, someone who cares about everything you talk about, everything you think about, your aspirations, where you're going to go to college, who you're going to marry, what you're going to eat, what you're going to do, where you're going to church, who you follow and unfollow. Listen, Jesus is interested in everything about you. And he's saying, I'm alive. I'm alive. I have risen. So, young people, may God bless you. I don't know what you're going through. And I've just given you a little bit of glimpse into my life. But I know the devil would like to discourage you from studying your Bible, from studying the spirit of prophecy, from going to church. He may want to discourage you through trials, through friends, through people in the church who are acting crazy and hypocritical. But keep your eyes on Jesus, your friend at the throne, whoever liveth to make intercession for you, who can give you the power to overcome tonight. You say, Vic, well, listen, bro, I got a temper, man. I lose my patience. I don't even know. Every five seconds, I'm losing my patience. My mom, my dad at church, I mean, I'm just angry, Lord. Because why would you allow the trials to impact my father, my mother, my sister, brother, whoever it may be? And God is saying, listen, don't weep. I'm alive. I'm risen. And I'm coming again, especially as Seventh-day Adventist young people. Jesus is coming again. He not only is alive and interceding on our behalf, but he says, listen, just as I went up, I'm coming back down. And I will create in a, a, a new earth and a new world. And we have to believe that tonight, young people. So... 
I know I've tried to conclude for the past five minutes now, but every time I, I every time I try to stop, there's something else that keeps coming in my head. But young people, stay close to God. The trials are going to come. The persecution for righteousness sake is going to come. Stay faithful to God. Don't be like many young people who in the church, one moment, out of the church, another, you go to college, after college, people are leaving the church. I told you this before, my Instagram is full of young friends, all avenues, turning up, doing crazy stuff. I mean, it, it, we got to pray for our brothers and sisters in the church, but stay encouraged. Our friend at the throne ever liveth to make intercession for us, and he's coming again. And stay faithful, young people. God bless you all. And uh, have a happy Sabbath. Okay, Brother Vic, that was that was beautiful. We we're gonna pray for your mom tonight. We're gonna pray for your family. Um, Thank so you. Thank inspired you. by these verses, why weepest thou? I know somebody um, right now that's dealing with some really hardcore uh, spiritual uh, mm -hmm. battles right now on their mind. Uh, I know I know of a, a, another young person who's struggling, uh, going through detox right now from being uh, addicted to, to meth and 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 uh, drugs uh, that are ha that is happening literally right you know as we talk these things are going on. Uh, mm -hmm. I I know uh, of our family that's here. There's some new people that have joined tonight that uh, I I don't know anything about. And I uh, can't wait to get to know you and find out how we can pray and be with you. Um, there was a number of things that you shared tonight, Vic, that, that I, I loved. One, obviously, the title and where, where you gathered the, your story, how you're mowing lawns and listening, and the Spirit of God talks to you and says this, and you're like, oh, wow. And, and, it, and it, just, it just grabs your, your whole life, um, was... What, and I'm going to post this. I'm going to get a picture of you, Vic, and I'm going to post this. But it okay. says Jesus is interested in everything about you. And we have a Gen Z that I just learned recently that that they they don't even know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. They don't even know who God is because their parents didn't want to talk yeah. to them about who God was because of whatever reason, religion, because they got beat with Ellen White information, because they got hurt. They don't want to do that. They're in sin. And now they're kids. They, so you'd say, hey, do you know anything about Jesus? And they're like, you mean Jesus, the guy that lives down the street? Right? Mm -hmm. And and we have a kid here that goes to our church. I'm doing Bible studies with. His name is Jesus. You mean that guy? Yeah. No, no, that's not what I mean. So I, I just want to take a couple of minutes here, Vic, if you're okay. Yes. And, and for anybody that has very specific questions about what Vic talked about tonight, I don't want to waver, ask Bible questions about anywhere else on the Bible. Vic's heart is tender. It is soft. And, and, and he is prepared to answer questions about what he's going through or what the Lord has taught him in the past as you heard him. Uh, recover scripture that was brought to his remembrance so i'm asking you guys if you ask questions ask questions specifically to what he shared tonight and don't go all over the board because i want to stay very focused in on this for the very reason that vic was about to text me and say bro i love you but <laughs> peace out <laughs> right and i was like was and there, you know bro. when he said that i was like okay like i'm thinking to myself lord what you know and i'm just so glad that you came with the sermon you needed so uh vic god bless you let's let's pray for your mom right now what's mom's first name myrna 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 let's pray right now father in heaven we know that you have answers we know that you know the the nature of our being our whole physical body you know all the cells, you know all the, uh, the laminin, you know all of the blood cells, you know all of our vessels, you know the 75 trillion uh, cells that we have in our body that are constantly changing. 75 trillion of them. And yet there is a sickness that is in Mama Myrna's physical body. 
And though that's there, it doesn't change who you are and where you are and what you're mm-hmm. able to do. Lord, we ask for your perfect will to be done in Mama Myrna. We mm-hmm. ask for your perfect will to be done in her family. That w- the legacy she has left behind, the heart that is in Vic, Lord, goes on tender, pure, exciting, uh, valiant for your word. We thank you for moving on Mama Myrna's physical body, Lord, bringing about peace, solace, and comfort, and undaunted courage through these times. In Jesus' name, amen.